being the first often implies a lonely journey. And in my case, the truth is in the numbers. In 2016, 0.06% of all earned doctorates were by Latinx students. At many points throughout my time at TC, I doubted whether I could finish, whether I was good enough to be here. I was pursuing a topic with little existing research, and I worried if my specialization in undocumented immigrant mental health would limit my career choices. I had few mentors who looked like me, who lived what I lived through, much less knew anything about my topic. I had even less peers who understood the magnitude of my presence and what it would mean if I finished. I worried about the family I left behind as I became the first of my 51 cousins to leave the state, much less move across the country. During my time at TC, I lost my paternal grandmother, my godfather, and recently, my father. I also met my life partner, got married, and had a son. Once I defended my dissertation and officially became a doctor, I sat in disbelief and reflected on my journey. I wondered if any of my ancestors had these feelings as they navigated new and oppressive spaces. My ancestors were the original braceros, temporary migrant workers recruited from Mexico to be farm workers. My great grandparents and grandparents' labor opened educational and vocational doors for their children and grandchildren. My grandparents and parents settled permanently in the US facing the harsh transition from Mexico at a time when US citizens were being deported and immigrants changed their names from Juan to John and Valenzuela to Valens to survive. Their rights were constantly changing, their worth always determined by those in power. I wondered, did my abuelita Mika, born in the US during one of her parents' migrant trips, doubt herself when she left her 10 children in Mexico? Did she worry? Did she worry? <laughs> Did she worry that the years of separation would be too high a cost in pursuit of a better life for her family? Was my Nana Julia afraid as she marched with union farm workers in Arizona as Cesar Chavez fasted for her right to strike? And Dolores Huerta coined the infamous phrase, si se puede. Did she question whether protesting was worth the risk of losing her job and her immigration status? When my mother, Olga, left behind her parents and nine siblings to work as a domestic in Los Angeles, did she have the same doubts about belonging? Being the first often means feeling like an imposter but something inside of us tells us to do it anyway. I was a high school counselor and became increasingly focused on assisting undocumented students and their families as they navigated the challenging transition into adulthood. As high school graduates, if they graduated, undocumented students were suddenly thrust into the reality of deportation, educational constraints, financial insecurity, and a lack of basic rights. I applied to TC because a Latina vice principal told me I should. She believed in me and I looked up to her, so I, so I went for it. There was a part of me that had never imagined myself as a doctor, but there was another part of me, a deeper rooted part that knew that becoming a doctor was not only possible, but it was a birthright. My mother often reminds me of the moment she envisioned her unborn children's future. At the age of 17, she had the opportunity to leave farm working to work as a nanny for a UCLA physician and professor. Far from her life in Sonora, Mexico, 
she found herself on UCLA's campus, where she would often bring the children to visit their father. She imagined her future children there. I not only attended that university for undergrad, I am returning there to work as a psychologist, where I will be known as Doctora Hernandez. <laughs> <laughs> My legacy of being the first is one that goes back many generations. Many of my ancestors stood in new places, in scary and uncharted spaces, and pictured themselves there as if they were born to be there. Their dreams, regardless of their scale, guided their actions and inspired future generations to pursue them. They imagined rights they didn't have yet, jobs and degrees that were generations away. And I'm here as proof that it can be done. I only wish my Nana Julia could join my Tata Antonio here today to hear me say, like Dolores once said, si sí, Nana, si sí pude. So I'm here to remind you today, keep imagining yourselves in spaces you have yet to break through. Live your life as if future generations will prosper from your labor, because your ancestors did just that, and here we are. Join me in saying, si se puede. Si se puede. Gracias.